So this is one of the first areas that sort of took off when we started seeing the whole digital revolution come into schools. And you know that. You were a part of it when you were a kid in school. Um, one of the goals, still is one of the goals, is the state test would be given by you walking into a room like this, by you, I mean a kid in you know, high school, middle school, elementary school, walking into a room like this and sitting down in front of the computer. There's a couple problems with that, as you probably guess. What do you do when all 100,000 some odd people all slam the state network at the same time taking the state test? So there's a technical issue. But as we all know, over the past 10, 15 years, there's been this real pushback on this whole standardized test, multiple choice test kind of business. And I don't have an answer for that. I mean, I've seen the data. In fact, I'll be hanging out with the person tomorrow who was the, I guess you'd call her the, the mother, the grandmother. She's not old enough. Well, she is old enough to be a grandmother. She doesn't look it. Um, a good friend of mine who got her PhD from us, who started Jefferson County using what was then called back then the Cascade, which is now called the MPA and the LPA. And you know what I'm talking about. If you've been in classrooms, you've heard teachers moaning and groaning about their MPA or LPA scores. Um, and the, the birth of that was really interesting because what Lisa was trying to do, I had just finished teaching her how to create what you're going to do tonight using Google Forms. But we were using something back then called FileMaker Pro. And what FileMaker Pro did is allowed you to create a database that you could then put tests in, that you could then keep the data, obviously. But you could put all of this onto the web. And it required someone who knew how to do it to teach you how to do it. Now tonight when I show you Google Forms, I'm going to show you that in one click, it's on the web. Whereas before that, you had to know certain code, you had to know how to write code, and all of that. I'm going to show you Google Forms because it is part of the Google Classroom, obviously. Duh. But then I want to show you a couple more, and I'll uh, explain why. Number one, we're going to take a look at um, a product that is near and dear to my heart and brain called Edpuzzle. Edpuzzle is a direct result of UDL. Remember UDL? Universal Design for Learning. So we're going to take a look at this product called Edpuzzle uh, because I think it goes a long way toward differentiation and UDL. And the fact that I can put the Ed Puzzle very easily, of course, into my Google Classroom. So I could create, so this back row represents the brains in my classroom. These are the really smart kids who are in my classroom. So I would demonstrate using the same piece of multimedia. But then I would ask you three to do something different to do your demonstration. Whereas then in this row, this is my row of kids that I want to push, but I don't want to push them so far that they get frustrated from the computer at me. I'll ask them to do it in a different way. And then my front row, of course, that's not where they always sit, is it? Back there. But my front row then are my kids who struggle. They might be LD, they might be whatever. And I can manipulate the information so that they have at least a fighting chance of understanding. That's why I love Ed Post. Well, I think it represents um, as close to universal design for learning as we can have right now. And then the last thing we'll take a look at is Nearpod. You ever heard of Nearpod? It's so hot you'll burn your hand when you go to it. It is, I don't know why, because you've already looked at some products that are very similar to it. Bunsy, remember Bunsy we played with that? So Nearpod is like that, except Nearpod for some reason has exploded in terms of its use. You'll hear it thrown around when you're in school. Especially like when you do your student teaching. If you've already done your student teaching and you haven't heard about it, I don't know why. I went on a crusade to get this bought by JCPS because when I first saw it, 
it just made sense. It made sense to me. But now it's old school. I mean, everything you can do in Nearpod, I can do in a Google Forms. It's hell of a lot cheaper. Because Google Forms is free inside of the, the whole G thing. Um, but we'll, we'll take a look at Nearpod as well. You ready? Let's try to do it this way. Let's play a little bit here with how you could do this if you were really in a classroom. So why don't we go and type in drive.google.com. In other words, get to your Google Drives. Hold there for a second while I do my obligatory explanation of assessment. Which, everybody out there, you're going to be snoozing off on me because you already know all this stuff. Somebody tell me the two forms of assessment. Thank you. Your stuff there on the screen. Huh? What is the key about formative assessment? It's like check-ins. It's like what? Check-ins. Yeah. Formative assessment. This is the thing that whenever you did a, somebody's K-tip observation, and there's a section in there about you know does the uh, candidate use assessment successfully, et cetera, et cetera. And we always used to have this argument when the trainers, when we go through this. We would always say, well, if Savannah just says to her kids, did you get all that? Give me five if you got all that. If you struggled, give me, you know. Is that formative assessment? And here's what's interesting. The people who wrote the book on all this would say, yes, that is. And why would you and I, Savannah, think it isn't? There's no way of really knowing. You know. Now, if I gave Savannah and Savannah, if I gave you guys an assessment and then I asked you at the end, how did you do? Maybe I could trust that. Not that you cheat. But you know, who's gonna sit there after taking a test and go, I got a line? Maybe Mike. Mike was already there. But I got a wood. What about it? <laughs> um, but you know, I think formative has gotten kind of loosey-goosey. But here's the good news. The good news is with something like Google Forms, Nearpod, all these tools we're going to play with tonight, I can get that strong sense of data out of the formative assessment. OK, Katie, you started this. So what's summative? Well, it checks, like at the end of a lesson or unit, typically. It like tests your knowledge over the whole entire subject, not just like one day. So that's where we get in trouble. Agree? Formative is pretty straightforward. I just taught you how to do, how to figure the area of a triangle. Let's see you do it. That's pretty straightforward. Now, when I get to summative and I start doing all that stuff about here's, here are 14 triangles, uh, tell me, figure the area of the triangles, and I get maybe seven kids who got all the areas right, and I got six who got half of it right, and I got another four who didn't get them all right. That's a nice, easy breakout, too. That tells me a lot. The problem with summatives, though, is, and this is a term that you'll learn if you hang around here a long time, is it's kind of a mixed method, or it can be a mixed method. In other words, it can be, not only am I asking you multiple choice questions, but I'm asking you blank questions, or I'm drawing lines from things, What's the problem with that? Think about it for a second in terms of learning style. If I'm giving you a test that's all multiple choice. Functions like that do as well as multiple choice. You strike me as this kind of person. Do you overthink things? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So people that's like. I'm you. always the first one to put in my math test because I don't ever go back to the And If I do, then I'll rethink it and see it. You and I are just alike. Yes, See, I overthink it. everything. And so I'll go <laughs> through and take the test, and then at the end I go, God, I'm too damn hard. I'm not going to go back. No, I really thought through that question. I know I had the right answer. And I, ooh, off I go. So multiple choice, and then if, if, if you have a multiple choice test that is a bad multiple choice test, and you know what I'm talking about. It's this word, but not that word, right? You 
know those tests, um, then it's a, it's a really unfair way of, although test designers will argue with you that the multiple choice test is the best way to get the self-check curves in cars. Here are the people who really knew the content. Here are the people who are pretty much kind of got it a little bit. And then here are the people over here who just don't get it at all. What about um, writing? Short answer. Essay. What happens with those? If you're a wordsmith, you're fine, aren't you? I used to get in trouble with mine because I would always put everything in nice, neat. Here's here's the thinking, and I would go one, two, three, four, five. Some professors loved it, and some would say to me, "That's not a narrative. I didn't know there was supposed to be a narrative." Maybe you tell a story. Well, once upon a time, we all had bets you weren't coming. What? Oh, you brought the dog. You told me to go white. Oh my God! Bring the dog in. Yeah. So this is a golden eagle. Here, Scott, hold it. Uh, Dr. Close the door. Please. Yeah, let's get the doors closed. <laughs> What's its name? Mike. <laughs> 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 Oliver. Oliver. Go ahead, let go. Let go, Scott. What's that? Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Hey, you do realize the recording this class, so whoever's not here, I don't know if it's Peyton or Chris or whoever, Julia, I don't know. But they're now at home going, Hi. Oh, that's fine. Go around, Oliver. Anybody afraid of dogs? Oh, we asked that last week. He hasn't said a word to me yet. <laughs> Oliver. <coughs> hey. <laughs> That's the food oil. Okay. Well, you're going to keep it. That's better than the lady who used to bring the bull master who would come up to here, right? <laughs> We have a dog in the room, folks. For those of you at home who are going, what's going on? What is happening? And Oliver seems to be running back and forth, up and down the road. Did you finally notice? Did you finally notice? So we've been talking about assessment, Mike. Okay. We've decided that formative assessment is good. The problem with it is it should always be as close to instruction as possible. Summative assessments <coughs> can be good, but sometimes with the different methodology that people use in summative assessment, a person who is a wordsmith like Savannah here struggle or doesn't struggle at all, whereas someone like me who is not a wordsmith, but I'm really good with just memorization, so on and so on. Now let me throw a third one at you that was really hot when you all, before you all were born, but it's hot now again. You ever heard of contracts? Have any of you been into a Montessori school, Westport, say? Have they done contracts there at all that you've seen, Mikey? Not really. Okay. So this other form of assessment is called ipsative. Ipsative. On my Apple Watch, there's my ipsative assessment of the day. You can't see that. No. You can see that. You know what that's showing, right? So, ipsative assessment is assessment where you basically identify a goal and then you work for it. It's as simple as that. Now, under contract assessment, what we used to do is we'd say, this is what you have to do to get an A. This is what you have to do to get a B. This is what you have to do to get a C. And if you don't, don't we show up in class, here's what you do to get a D. And basically, students would say, well, I want the A, and then you would sign up for that, and then the understanding was you were going to meet the criteria to get that A. And so as you went through the semester or the year, you basically reported to the instructor, to the teacher, you'd say, here's where I am on my path. That's very Montessori, extremely Montessori. Ipsative, I think, 
I think gets a lot of short shrift because it puts the onus back on me to decide what I'm going to be doing to get my grade. Mike, we started uh, tonight by going to our drive. We're going to go a little bit fast backwards tonight. I'm going to teach Google Forms from your drive, just so you know where we're at. I'm going to be really hard pressed to keep focus with you and me. Oh, you're cool. <laughs> <laughs> I love dogs. So how is this consumer acceptable? Excellent question. So again, so my goal right now is to do that mile swim that I try to do in 45 minutes. Okay. So what am I up to right now? Right around an hour. So what I do is, is I track, right? And then with something like that, you, you know, you get into the, the, the granularity of it, and I can go in and look at this watch, and it'll tell me like how, how big a stroke was, you know, how far I'm reaching out, so on like that. So I've got data there that I can play with. Now let's take it to what you're trying to get at. Yeah. All right, so you're teaching a class, and you basically say to kids, you're going to set your goals. If you want an aid from me, this is what you have to do. Now, what could that look like? Score X on quizzes. Yeah. Right. Score something on a project, because you're not going to be that teacher. You're going to be that teacher that does project-based learning. You just see it in your eyes. And you're going to say, this is what your project's going to look like. In other words, you're going to have a rubric. It's very clear and very precise. It's not one of these goofy rubrics where it's like, the student did well. No, you're going to be able to give very clear points. The thing is, is I own that. It's not Savannah's job. It's my job. Remember we talked about, well, I was going to, I, let, let's just mention it. Shalekni, the guy I talked about when we did the whole pulling thing. So Phil's thing is, he lives here. He's from Louisville. Like these whole thing is that kids go to school to watch teachers work, and it ought to be the other way around. Okay, that what we ought to be doing is she has outlined what she's going to do to have success in your classroom. Now she doesn't do it out of the clear blue. How could she? But yet when you lay out, here's what we need to be doing in this classroom. What do you think? Now, some people will always go for the lowest one, won't they? Because they're insecure and they're not sure of themselves. That's where I have to come back in as a teacher. Because we all know that the best way to teach is to teach to a level that's right above where it's hard, but not so high that it's frustration. That's where I, as the expert in teaching and learning, step back into the picture. I think you can do a better job than what you said you are going to do. Let's push it up a little bit. Totally. Right? It's sort of like they're meeting their goal too fast. Okay, my question is like my um, mentor teacher for one of my classes just started this goal thing, but for math testing. Is that is that not for someone? Okay. Yeah. So the whole you, have you actually seen them do the the uh, math well, testing? Well, they meet with the different like uh, teacher that helps them make the goals, like the really struggling ones. But then in the classroom, like they have individual goal folders. And it's a give assessment, right? Cool. So if you want to impress her, yeah. just go, I really like the one you do. I thought it was really cool because like she did it with different like uh, Where is this? Coffins. Well, yeah, they would know that. Yeah. So they did it with different like websites that help them in math and reading already on different levels. They could just look them up. So what you're going to do is you're going to go back after you tonight and you're going to show her this. Okay. And you'll say, let me show you something that really can take this to a new level because like I said, I can take the same video, so my, my original content set is reliable. It, in other words, it will always be the same thing. But yet, I can manipulate it so that when I have the kid who struggles, the mic in my room, I can manipulate it. <laughs> set, with love, set with love. Guilty. Set with love. I can manipulate it so that it meets my specific needs. Whereas my three in the back row who, you know, are the stars, then I'll just basically give them the kind of information that I'd expect my stars to be able to handle. Okay. 
I could do it all in all of it we're going to play with tonight, but boy, can you really do it in it? Okay. This is this going to be Mike and Love all night? Me and him were best buds, so. We're going to have, if, I, I don't know who's, who's after tonight, but next week we're going to have to ask him, well, what did you think was going on in here? Savannah, right here, see this whole Ipsative assessment thing. Uh, I stole this from Kleeman. Um, and you know what's interesting is when you look up here at the norm reference and the, let's, let's see if Katie's still with us. So Katie, what's the norm reference test? You can look up at the screen. It's a test that compares the test taker against his and her peers. Right, which is what class is, great, most classes. That's how you get away with the whole curve and all that kind of crap. Agree? Yes. All right, what's criteria you referenced? It's a test that measures the test figure against external criteria. So that would be like um, district testing? Yeah. Like so that's what English? her math thing is. Proficient that she's and distinguished type of thing? Huh? Proficient and distinguished type of thing? Yeah. Okay. Interesting. So again, what's the problem with both of those? And this is this is a huge philosophical question right now. To stop and think about what's the problem with both of them? Is it because they're comparing students to one another? Yeah. You know, is it fair to compare Mike and Scott? No. Yeah. It doesn't sound different levels. Huh? Yeah, different levels. Different levels. Exactly. On different right. levels. Hey, Scott. You know, and, and the thing that we keep coming back to over and over and over and over again about all these writers that do educational <laughs> research. Anyway. Yeah. And my favorite is a guy by the name of Carl Bright because he was a good friend of works at the University of Toronto. Carl says it very simply. He says, we all walk around with artifacts in our head, knowledge. And because they're in our head, in other words, if you go back to what Rosen said, remember he talked about that whole making neuron connections and myelin and all that. Because it's in there, it's in there. And you know this. You run into somebody who believes something that is so absurdly wrong, and not political, just don't go there. These are little kids. When they come in and they have an idea in their head because they've gotten something in their head, they can't let it go. Those artifacts of knowledge, the other end of that scale is you lived a very sheltered life or you lived a very poor life. So your, your experiential knowledge is extremely low. So I bring you into this high-flying classroom, cool stuff, and I start passing out blocks to you, and I start asking you to make a grid with them or an array with them. And if you've never had a set of blocks in your life, what are you going to do? Thank you. Yeah, I'm paying attention. Huh? I'm paying attention. I know you are. See what I'm saying? So we keep coming back to that reality over and over again, and then people. You know, people come into these mixed up classes of kids from all different walks of life and all different backgrounds. And you just want to say, look, guys, there's, there's not a lot of <clears throat> deep stuff going on here. Kids who come from backgrounds that are devoid of any kind of experiences or any kind of creativity or any kind of anything except shut up, sit down, turn the TV on, that's where your problems come from. Let's do a Google form. So what I want to do is I'm going to work. I'm not going to work. Michael, it's my favorite word. Bass backwards. <laughs> so I'm going to go and start with my drive. So I'm going to be in my Google Drive. Now I'm doing this because I just want you to get the sense of how you could do this. Hi, huh, Bubby. You want to come up here and run the computer with me? <laughs> Let's sit here. Do you like being scratched on your ears? Most dogs do. Oh, you licked me. Thank you. Okay. This this is going to be so weird. I, I'm, I'm going to hang on to this recording. So I'm in my drive. I'm going to click on the little plusy sign. And then I'm going to come down to more. I'm in my drive, drive.google.com. You may have to log in to get to it. There's a, um, 
um, link in the module. Don't use that. We're playing here. I oh, could use that if you want to use that. That's fine. You know, it'll, it'll work the same way. What well, all I'm trying to do, Katie, is to give you a sense. You can do this one of two ways. Number one way is we can go into the classroom, classwork plus sign the sign uh, test mm -hmm. quiz. They call it. We can go in that way. Okay. What I'm trying to get you to see in this way is I could create the thing that lives in here so that when I want to use it next year, I don't have to go back in and recreate the wheel. Because if I create it in my classroom for this year, what happens? It's stuck. It's kind of stuck in that classroom. Unless I deliberately go and move it over to the drive. I'm trying to honor this idea of actually drive being the closet where you keep everything. Yeah. Now, if Gupton were here, Carrie were here, She'd be yelling at me going, well, you should create a folder first, Steve, and call it assessments. Thank you, Carrie. I agree. Okay. You all are smart enough that I don't have to jump you through those hoops. Come on up here and just sit with me. So I'm going to go Google Forms. And there you go. So let's look real fast at what we can do. First thing we want to do is give it a name. So call it whatever you want to call it, but try to, try to get it into a content area. Multiplication questions. Uh, you want to do social studies questions. I'm not trying to put you on the spot here, but kind of think about your own content you're going to teach. He's like, you walk around a lot. Typically uh, follows movement. You with me? Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm going to call mine Ipsative Assessment. Now, if I want to give a description, I can. So I could go down here and just type something in. Let's find out what we know. Simple as that. Would he let you know if he needs to go out, Mike? I just took him out before we got here. Okay. So he's good for at least six hours. I <laughs> know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's pretty good. Okay. Now, when I click in below where the actual questions are going to go, what do you notice? Over here, you've got a drop down box and looky, looky, looky. What all you can do. Well, what else could you do? Look at that, Katie. Look what you could do. Yeah. Well, why print it off? What? Yeah, why print it off? I agree. I agree, Scott. <laughs> why print it off? Now, now, let's, no, no, in all fairness to Scott. This goes back to the whole, like, kindergartners can't do this. Yeah, they can. They can do this. Honey, I've been there. Okay. I've trained people in their rooms doing this. Now, could they? Questions have to be super simple. Exactly. And you'll see in a second how I can make those questions really stupidly simple. And I don't mean that in terms of kids are stupid. Mm -hmm. But I mean in the fact that the question is so obvious. Select the word red. Yeah, exactly. And actually had the word red there in red. Yeah. Sending all those facial cues. But look, here's what else I wanted you to see. Okay. If you go up here and you look at things like you got multiple choices. You got drop down. You got you got linear scale. What's a linear scale mean? What's a Likert scale? You had that term yet in class? What was the word? Likert. L I C K E R T. Likert. A liquor spill. I know what liquor scale. I understand. What is it? Um. He thought you said liquor. Yeah. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Do you like school? Very satisfied. Oh, yeah. Okay, that's what it is. So, what could you put at the end of the test? I think I have to know my difficulty. How'd you do? Rate yourself on how you did. Rate yourself on how the test was. Did you, did you think the test was hard? 
Yeah. Um, no. Yeah. I'm not squirrel. You could even put a mint in there if you wanted to, right? You could, you could put that in if you wanted to. It's to do faces. Huh? They have an option to do like a face, not a face, down face. Yes, I think you can. We'll look at that for a second. Okay. Now, see, that goes back to what Kate's asking. She's saying little kids can't do this. But you'll see here in a second how we can make these tests not stupid, but simple. Stupid simple. Yeah, stupidly simple. That's my other favorite phrase. And you also know my phrase about if you teach a technology to kids in 15 minutes, if you can't explain it to them, what do you do, Mike? You walk away. In other words, if the district says to me, you have to use this technology in your classroom, and I go to try to use it with a group of kids, and in 15 minutes, if they're not understanding, it's not worth me messing with. It's just not. Boy, have I seen that. Can we do just a multiple choice real fast? Let's see if we can get Katie's thing here. So I'm going to ask a question. Testing is, and then up here is my option one. Kate, do you see out there on the end of the line, that little square yep. on the right-hand side? There you go. So at this point, I have the ability to put the kind of visual clues in. I could bring something in from my drive. I could bring in from an Earl. So to Scott's question, what's red? So I could have a picture of an apple. I could have a picture of a banana. I could have a picture of a you know, kid picks the right one. So here's how you can do that. Could I put in a YouTube video? Well, there it is. Viral. Now, to really make it mushy and gushy, I could take, I could make this test up, use my Ed Puzzle video that you're going to learn how to make here in a few minutes, and put it in there. So not only am I giving you the questions, but I'm also giving you the resources with you in that resource, helping kids understand what it is. When I saw Ed Puzzle for the first time, I got all excited about it because the most important person in the classroom teaching is not a YouTube video, it's you. So if I can put the two of those together into one content, I've got something. All right. Is that good, Katie? Yes. All right. Now, notice over here, I can, uh, there's a little array that appears. That's so I can drag things around. Okay. So let me go ahead. Uh, what did I say? Testing is. Well, you know what I'm going to do. I'm just going to copy this. But you get the idea. So all I'm doing here. And I'm going to put it down in each one of my things. What's the circle to the left of it for, do you think? If I click one of these circles, what does it do? That's my answer. <clears throat> now. The, the benefit, more than anything else, and this gets back to what Samantha was talking about with the class she's in, of doing it through this is it's tied into the gradebook automatically. I don't have to do anything. That puppy is tied into the gradebook. So when the kids take the test, whatever their score is, is automatically going to go up into the gradebook. And depending upon how I set up my gradebook, It'll either give you an instant feedback, which, of course, I probably want to do with this. Uh, and then, of course, that feedback would be available to the kids' parents.
a lot of schools, especially high schools, are really pushing hard to get rid of the parent portal. You know what parent portal is? Yeah, it's yeah. a waste of time. Yeah, it's a waste of time. My mom was a teacher and never looked at that thing. Yep. And, you know, it's one of those things where why do I need parent portal, which is a pain in the butt to get into, A, when all the kids got to do is log in, or all I got to do is log in with my kids' information and I see everything. Or the other way you do that is you request having your own login and they give it to you as a parent. We good? Is this test required? You make that decision. I'm going to go ahead and say yes. You can do a shuffle the option order if you want to. You can show the description so in other words the kids know what's going on. You can send them to, if you want to design the test, that basically would allow you to have, so they get it wrong, it will take them to a section that says, here's what you got wrong and this is the right answer. Okay, you can build all that into it. Go up to the plus, and now I've created another question. I can create questions and import them. I don't know where they think you do that, except maybe in a Google Doc. Oh, I see. It's pulling in. Okay. So it's going to go in here and look at my forms from wherever, whatever. Let's try that. So I'm going to grab that big guy right there, and we'll do a select, and we'll do just that one lesson, and we'll import the questions. And all of a sudden, my test looks really cool, doesn't it? <laughs> you know, in all seriousness, district does this. Okay. They use for their, um, as a sub, you have to take tests for training. That's what they do. Yeah. District does this. So, again, this is one of those situations where somebody out there is making this stuff for you, especially getting to Savannah's point. When those maps and those those LAPs and those MAPs have all been vetted and created at central office, all they're trying to do is to get you to use them, which of course you have to. But all right, so that was bringing it in on its own. Adding an image, we already talked about that. There's your video. So if I go here and I go, let's see what happens if I put in Ipsa to This should be funny. So I'm going to put that in. So I've got a resource I can put in, and then I could say, watch this video, answer the questions, et cetera, et cetera. You with me? Now, at the end of my test creation, of course, this has been saved because I've been working on it. So it's, it's in my drive. I don't have to worry about it. But now if I'm ready to get it over, to my class, what do I do? So I can either send it through the email addresses I have in my class. This is bad because you can't see the fact that you would see everybody in here. And I could literally go through this thing and I could say, I want Scott, I want Mike, I want Katie to take this test. Boom. Okay, well, no, sorry, link. Now, what I could do, the other way I could do it, is I can come over here to the three dots next to send, get the pre-filled link, in other words, it has everything in it, and if I go back to my classroom, because this is where this is all going to end up anyway, Or 
search mine. There it is. If I go into here and I go to classwork and I create, I have that quiz assignment with, you actually open it and look at it, it looks an awful lot like what we just did. In fact, it is. But here's the div. Notice down here, you see you've got all of this. But if I just put it in through what I've just created using the link, I, I still get all that stuff. So if I go out of here and I come up here to, I want to do an assignment. And I'm going to put in the link to my assignment. It will then come in, but I don't lose it. In other words, it's still sitting over here in my wonderful drive. So there we go. Come on. There we go. I forgot to click on the get link. Kind of important to do. And now I'll paste it in. <laughs> All right. Something odd is happening up here. Get link. doesn't like me doing it. How about we do it this way then? I'll go to my drive. And I'll add it. You have a title, same thing, test, instructions, please take this test, et cetera, et cetera. And then there's your due dates that you can make it due on. So make it due on something. And then there's your topics. And I created a topic back when we were building this classroom. And I just called it topic one. And there it goes. So I need to give it a title, Ipsitip. Test about Ipsative. There we go. All set, ready to rock. Google Forms, the, the beauty of Google Forms is there's a couple of things. That's the beauty of Google Forms. Um, one is that when you're in a Google Form, one of the things that you can do is you can send it out to the web. Now you say, well, Steve, it's already on the web. What do you mean? Well, it actually, you can create it so that it looks like that. So you can take the HTML, the embeddable HTML, and you can put it on um, a Google Sites page. You could put it on anything except, wait for it, you can't put it in a Google Classroom because Google Classroom does not understand embeddable stuff, which I've yet to figure out why they do that. The power of it, though, is... It all contains its links. But even though I put this somewhere that's not within my classroom, if kids take it, it sends the data back. You ready to move on? Do we need to upload that to our classroom? Uh huh. Don't need to get fancy. I don't need fancy. I just need you to, to play around with what does it look like? What does it do? You know, if, if Scott, if all you did was create a exit slip, 
fine with me. Because you'd understand now that you would use the Likert scale for that exit slip. And maybe include in it a short answer where you could say, so what was it about the lesson that worked for you? What didn't work for you? So when we're done tonight, you're going to have three different assignments, lessons, what do you want to call it, that will each show one of these. You with me? The Nearpod, what we're going to do here in a second, if you find a Nearpod that you just want to use, you're allowed to do that. If you want to create your own, that's fine too. Ready to go to your pot? Yep. Savannah? Yep. You ready? Savannah, Savannah? Yep. You look very intense. You ready to go? Yes. Okay. I'm just trying to find it on the blackboard. What? Where I am? Uh, yeah, near pot. I got it though. Okay. So now I'm going to click on this link down here that says Nearpod. Now this time we're not, you know, you can go nearpod.com if you want to. But just get it from out of the blackboard. And let me start closing some things down here. Being very careful not to close out my... Okay. This is Nearpod. As I said, when I first started seeing Nearpod about eight, nine years ago, it really blew me away. I couldn't believe it. She went to the bathroom. She's okay. She'll be back. She'll be back. Now, it's almost passe. When I show it to you, you'll go, well, yeah, Steve, I've seen stuff like that. But boy, it was a revolution back then. Now, here's the other thing. You can, can through demonstration, if you're the kind of person who likes building content, you can become a Nearpod teacher and you can sell your stuff. And they don't keep any of it. In other words, if Mike creates a Nearpod lesson and he wants to charge $5 for it, Scott goes and buys it for five dollars. Five dollars goes into his pocket. They're pretty good about that. You may use my login. I'm saving you a good chunk of change, folks. Remember that's at SB Swan02 at Louisville.edu. And the password is at lowercase U L I T two four one. I have teachers using this all, well, I had teachers using it all over the district. Now that the district bought it, they don't bother me more. But I think you'll see, I don't know if Gelfin will be in there. There's another lady who is down in Franklin County. She uses my near class. My PhD student, she's a near pod teacher, so she actually creates content and sells it through uh, the near pod. You with me? Did you get in? Was Katie just going to the bathroom or is she gone? Her stuff's still here. We're trying to get her logged in for you. Okay. It's SP Swan 02. Uh, SP Swan 02. Louisville.edu. And then you. That password is at lowercase U L I T 241. Let's just debrief on the form by waiting for us. I don't want to get too far ahead of her on this. This is a little bit more. Intense. So, what are the positives about Google Forms? Anything? It's seamless. It's not a lot of work from back end, work on the front end. And not a whole lot going on there. Yeah. It's just, there's not that much to it. But if you stop and think, the very nature of formative assessment should be that, right? I mean, I could literally see you creating this on the fly, sitting in your classroom. Especially if every kid in the in the house has got you know a Chromebook in front, and you left in my class, or you came back in my class, doing a wrestling thing here. Yeah, drug deal. Yep. Oliver, your daddy left. Your daddy. Hey, Ollie. My daddy's gone. So what?
what is the difference? Oh my God, this is like night and day. So Nearpod can be very intimidating because you can put just about anything into a Nearpod. That's cute. Think about it as it's okay, brother. It's okay. He's coming back. He's coming back. He's coming back. Don't worry. Okay. You're just like my Wilson. Um, go ahead and click on a couple of these just so you can see what's possible. So you want to click on preview. And when you click on preview, it'll give you a place to start. Now, here's what Nearpod does or can do. When I start a Nearpod lesson, it puts a code up on the screen. If I have my phone and I have the Nearpod app on it, I can participate. If I'm at a Chromebook, I can participate. In other words, whatever you got, iPad, whatever, I can participate. That's one way. The second way, Oh, I dropped my cat. My The second way is you could assign it for homework, and then it's up to the kids. But having assigned it as homework also means I can move it over somewhere else, like into the Google Classroom, which we're going to do here in a minute. So when you go up here and you see where it says Preview, and I start clicking, it's going to show me what's all in here. Now, you rightly can say, oh, Steve, that just looks like Buncey, or that looks like a PowerPoint, and you are dead on right. So as you can see, this guy has created the essential question and the objectives. And so the first thing he does, look, let me show you what he did. So he's in here, and he goes, what do you know? Then the next thing that comes up is dun, da, da, dun, an open-ended question. So he's already asking kids, let's check for prior knowledge. Now, without giving it too much away, you'll see in a minute here how I can link this thing back to my Google Classroom. When I do that, what's going to happen to all the stuff that kids could put into the Nearpod? Does it go get dumped back over to Google Classroom? Into the grade book? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yeah. That's the power of it. Yeah, we were all standing at the door whining and crying because you were gone. Those of you who are at home right now watching this video, you've got to text me with your comments about how crazy it must have looked or sounded. Notice what you can do with the Nearpod. Here's a 3D, or I'm sorry, a 360 virtual reality look at the Great Wall. Okay, so again, now we're going in. We're doing work here. Another open-ended question coming up. So on and so on. Now, I'm going to jump ahead a little bit because I'm going to lose Katie here in a little bit. And I just want to make sure she sees this. So if I go to preview, in other words, if I find something that I really like, remember, I've given you two options here, guys. I'm going to show you in a second how to build something. You don't have to build it big. Just maybe three or four slides. And if you want to make them goofy, that's okay, too. I just want you to see how it works. But if you find one in here that makes you go, well, that's cool. So I'm going to grab this great wall one, and I'm going to come down here and click on where it says share. You see it? So now I have the ability that I can share my I can share this thing with anybody that I want to. I clicked on the wrong one. I apologize. I did that wrong. I clicked on the wrong thing. I can share it just by telling it I want it to go over to the Google Classroom. Yeah. 
and I'm having a brain fart. Well, I am. I'm having a brain fart, Mikey. There's where everything lives. Oh, I know. 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 I have to save the lesson. Okay? I have to save the lesson first. In other words, I'm going to use it. That's what I'm saying to it. And then if I say I want it to be student paced, let me walk you through it. So you all are sitting out there with your phones and you all have Nearpod on them. I'm not going to make you do all that. You know what I'm talking about. And if I go live lesson, and if you put that code into your live lesson, what does it do? I take over your device. Okay, so I'm going to be the one flipping through the slides. I don't know how I feel about that. I think it's kind of dorky. Unless it's, it's something that's really kind of cool and I want you to see it. Um, I, th to me, this is, I don't get as excited as some people do about this. But look what it's got here. There's where it lives. Now, the other way I can do it so it doesn't have to be live is I can go down here and you see it's waiting for you to sign in. Where are you signing in from? Your Google Classroom. So anything that I do in here is now going to go back out um, to the Google Classroom. Now let me get out of here because I want to show you the other way. Okay, so let's go do that again. If I now go to this lesson that I saved, remember I got to save it first. I didn't make this, but I've saved it into my lessons. And I'm going to say I want to be student paced. Okay. I can now change up what I want it to be. And then I can put it into my Google Classroom. And it pops up and it says, so where are you going? I'm going to say I want to choose my class, which is my 397 class. And what is the action that I want to do? Create the assignment. Well, let me show you what it looks like when I do that. So when I go in, I say I want to create the assignment. And I say go. There's that same page that you're familiar with now. Let's do this Nearpod to see what you have learned. Okay. And as you see, the Nearpod's already populated and we're all set to go. And I go assign and kaboom. And I can view what it looks like in my classroom. And there it is. So now let me go a little bit further back up a little bit. Let's make one just real fast, just so you can see what's all possible. And again, I'm not looking for you to actually make one that's truly applicable. I just want you to see what you can do. So if I go up here and click on the plus, create, notice over here, if I had a Google Slides presentation, again, that the district might have sent me, I can suck all that in and turn it into a Nearpod. Or I can go in and pull a lesson from the Nearpod in, and then I can play and change it except for one exception. What would that be, do you think? If it costs. So I can't mess with somebody's Nearpod that's going to cost. Now, if it's Mike's Nearpod and I really, really like it, because he's done an excellent job and he wants 450 for it, and then I go and buy it, then I can edit. I can play with it. And from what I understand, what the district has, do, has done is they have bought stuff in here. And they make it available to you in your school. So let's go ahead, let's just create one. We're gonna create a lesson in Nearpod. And this should start looking kind of familiar to you. So you've got add slides. So I'm gonna add a slide, add a content. So 
if I click on that, look what all I can put in here, guys. I can put a slide. I can put a near pot. Hello. Remember our old friend over here? Okay. I can do a three. I can do a field trip, which in other words, if I go somewhere, um, it's nutty. It's just so nutty what all you can put in to this thing. I'm going to jump into FET just to see where I could go. Now let's go math elementary school. And let's do, I'm going to do area model introduction. I'm going to pick that one. I'm going to do it done. I now have a FET inside my Nearpod inside well it will be inside my google classroom so i'm going to go add a slide i'm going to add content and all i'm going to do with this one is just make a slide and in this one this, this is very powerpointy extremely powerpointy so at this point i'm just going to put in here uh experience the area formation tutorial. Boy, that's, I'm kind of talking high levels here. I wouldn't do this with elementary kids. Fix my spelling mistake. Okay. And I'm going to save it. And of course, just like in PowerPoint or anything else, I can move slides around. Just put that one in in front of the other. Now, if you want to play, you know, try throwing in a 3D. I don't know what we'll find down here. Ooh, maybe environment might give us something. Oh, uh, we could all put dogs in to honor Oliver's visit tonight. Can we do that, Oliver? Can we all put in you and Fascinates me some of the stuff that they put in these things. Okay, I'm going to throw uh, Saturn in here just for giggles. So now I have a Nearpod 3D. I'm going to go back and add a new slide. And this is where the formative summative assessment now takes off. I can add a slide and bang. So these are the different things that you can put in. And goodness gracious, look at all the choices you have. Now, this is where they've drugged me out to schools to teach teachers who have iPads. Can you guess which thing up there would be the way we could test if you had an iPad for every kid in the room? Look at your best choices up there. Best last thing you thought of. Can you throw anything? Writing? Okay. Do they have other iPads? No, they don't bring them with us. We brought the computer. Yeah. So they need Chromebooks. Do they touch screen? Okay. Yeah, they are. Are they? Mm -hmm. Oh, are they? Uh, Chromebooks? Scotty, which one would be the one I would oh, use then up there? I swear. Hang on, long class. For the class that I'm observing, I'm observing the work week class. Do they have iPads? So they're going like 12 of them. Yeah. Yeah, that's so they're not enough. Like, that's the original fine. group I helped you set up. Draw it. Look up there. So I could do a math kind of question and then ask kids to draw the array or draw your understanding or whatever. I've seen this done with high school classes where every kid's got their own damn phone, right? And so the question will be, you know, uh, solve or slope and then show me the slope. I've seen that done lots. So this is how you can put the assessment then into your thing. Now Katie, to get to your thing about little kids, look here with the memory test. You were talking about doing all this kind of stuff with little kids? Yeah. So here's your classic little card flip over thing. Oh, that's fine. It's like Quizlet. 
Yeah, very much like Quizlet. So what Nearpod did, it's fascinating to watch or to read about their growth. So what Nearpod did is they seriously went out and started looking at all the Quizlets, the quizzes, all those other things. There was another one out there called um, Quiz You. I call it the Rocky Quiz, right? You, Peter. The what? I call it the Rocky Quiz because yeah. its title was. Yeah. Looks too young. I'm not gonna get that. Okay, that's good. Right. No, I got it. Okay, thanks. Okay. Thanks, bro. Bro, <laughs> what? It's okay, babe. I was in Philadelphia this weekend, so it was kind of driven home to be there. Because I actually okay. did see guys on the street going, "Yo, <laughs> okay, it was real." <laughs> But the whole idea of this is you've got it right here. Katie, I could build that kind of little fun thing that kids could do. So what I have to do, first of all, would be to go get my images, put them in, and I'd mix them all up around here. And then when kids would take the test, they'd be flipping them over and, and seeing which ones fit. So what makes the Nearpod so astounding is and I also do a time to climb, Savannah. So here we go. This is how I can have a test that will show you how you're doing going up on getting to your Yeah, I find this funny that uh, this is JCPS's uh, sandbox that they made a million years ago when they were using this, and they're still using it. In other words, they're logging in as me, and they're still using the account. Have you got it? Have you got it in your pod? Huh? Where is it? Where is it? It's what we were talking about earlier when you said, how, how am I doing? Oh. So you would basically take the test and then, you know, if you think about it, it's a link test, yeah. right? So if you understand this and you pass it, well, then we'll move you up to this. Then you pass that, we'll move you up to this. Yeah. You know, it's like that reading test that they give kids. Do they still do that where they find out what stay nine you're reading at and all that? Mm -hmm. Like AR reading? Oh, I hate so you can make known what it's doing. Like yeah, yeah. 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 Well, yeah, it's AR reading, but they don't. Sound rated reading, is that what it's called? Yeah, it is. Like, uh, reader. Uh, you could do an entire doctorate on explaining why accelerated reader was so popular with kids, but yet was such a poor predictor of reading skills. Just a hint. She was reading Harry Potter books in first grade. And then there was me over there reading like 30. I was reading like 30. Little. Let's review. Nearpod allows you to do real time testing. In other words, everybody take out your phone. We're going to take a test. Okay. You then have the kids put the code that it gives you. When you see that live, when they put that in, you essentially take over their devices. So what I'd have to do is I'd have to walk around the room, make sure everybody has the code in their device. I'm definitely going to make sure on Mike because he'll be off looking at something he shouldn't be. Well, he, he couldn't do it inside of school anyway. Right. Um, <laughs> yeah, right. Oh, God, but you're clowning me. that's how you do it. The other way to do it would be, that's what's funny. the other way to do it, Mike? Not live, but what's the other way I can send this thing? I can send it both to your computer, your Google Classroom. But if I send it to you, let me show you. If I send it to you, what? He said student paste. Right, student paste. So we were uploading these to our classroom. Right. As I said, Scott, if if you can find one that you think is cool and you would like to use it, feel free. Do that one. Because I'm not here to be teaching you test design. You want to do that? We'll do that. 
Yes, it is. This is. It is. I got my son. And one of the things where I said, if this kind of stuff turns you on, the near pod community is one of the best I've ever seen. When I say near pod community, I mean those people who actually make the stuff that they run. They will show you things you wouldn't believe. And then all you have to do is basically it's all going to be basically related to say, I made this content and I'd like to sell it on your site. And then what they'll do is they'll take it and they're content people to look at. Okay, and if they don't like it, even, they'll come back and say to you, what you do this up? Do this, do that. Well, I don't. Yeah. 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 It's very teacher, teacher to teacher. It's very it's like teacher really to teacher. Cool. Yeah, this is, I mean, I didn't yeah, know the math, but naturally. Work. I feel like it just makes more fun. Yeah. Like, yeah. 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 What was so funny when it first came out, it was just PowerPoint. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You just look like PowerPoint, yeah. right? And the power of it was that you could yes, good afternoon. That you could add a little goofy test to your PowerPoint. That was it. That's all it had. But then when it started putting all those connections in, then it just and this little brain on that just made sense to me. And I had all this. So I always have to go to say to a kid, okay, let's all go to the PHET.com. Now let's all go here. Let's all go here. You know, I don't have to do that. Yeah. It all sitting right there in one location. You good, Stan? Yeah. Scotty, you good? Yeah. I got it. Yeah, yeah, we're good. Get ready to put it in. Intellectually, I love Nearpod because it does. You're saying AirPod. I Nearpod. Okay. I keep thinking you're saying. Did I say AirPod? No, you're saying Nearpod, but it sounds like AirPod. Yeah. They should sue Apple. I'm sure they'll win that. Yeah. <laughs> Especially they come out with a product called Nearpod yeah. Pro. <laughs> right. The one I think the only one that I find that's not quite there yet are the three D things. I don't know what you would do with them. Why do I need to have a dog that I'm going to spin around and look at? Oliver, Oliver, why would I want to have a dog that I could spin around and look at, buddy? Could you tell me that? Come here, Oliver. Oh, Oliver, don't walk away. Okay, let me go over if you want to use one of the lessons that's in there. You save it, basically you're saving it to my account, and that's fine, there's hundreds on there. You're saving it, and then you're going to go in, and you're going to send it either through student paste or live. You're going to be doing student paste. What? The only difference between student pace and live is it still goes to my Google Classroom. But in the live, it's going to come up and it's going to say, okay, Savannah, use this code, put this code into your computer. And by the way, you, you can put the code. Huh? Do you have to give them the code when you put it in Google Classroom or is it automatic? It comes up. Okay. Mm -hmm. But in other words, when they click on it, it says, put this code in. You put the code in, then you own their device. They can't do anything. Uh, turn it off. That's about it. Drop the lid. That's about it. If you do it as student paste, it's homework. That's the best way to think about it. Now, as a sidebar to that story, I have a young man who's over here at Manual, and he teaches down for two. So what we know about Manual is a lot of smart kids. It's a budget, right? We think so. Right. So what he was doing was he was putting all of this Nearpod stuff that he created, and it was good. He was putting it in as, as homework to pay. And what a group of kids finally came to me and said, I don't have access to my home. And which started a whole chain of events happening with the resides kids in Central being underserved. Right. He was so cute. He'd come over here and sit in my office and he'd go, 
You think they're going to fire me because I'm shaking things up? So said, well, they do. you got a damn fine case. So, my whole plan is to burn it down. To see me down or they're going to take away the ability for me to throw people out? Yeah. You ready to do Ed Puzzle? Sure. Yeah. All right. Sure. Ed Puzzle, as I said, your pot owns my brain. Your Ed Puzzle owns my heart. So what is Ed Puzzle? It's really stupidly simple. There you go, Mike. Ed Puzzle is a way for you to take any content that is a video and turn it into your video. So I'm going to go to Ed Puzzle through the link. Now, first thing, right out of the box, look on this left-hand side of the screen. Look at your content area that you can play in. Yeah, YouTube's there. Thanks. But look what else is in there. You're coming in as me again. So you're at spswan02 at louisville.edu, ulit241. And as always, you may use this. I don't know if people are like, why do you guys do people that are like, why do you guys do people that are like, why do you guys do people that are like, why do you guys do people that are like, why do you guys do people that are like, why do you guys do people that are like, why do you guys do people that are like, why do You've logged in as me. If you want to create your own class within this structure, please feel free. Okay. Now, this is really simple, but because of its simplicity, there's some real power hiding behind all this. So let's go to, by the way, up here where it says my classes, that's where you can, you can create your own class. And then you'll notice right here, you can invite students. Hello, if I had a Google Classroom, I can bring them in this. You with me? Okay. So what I want you to do, you can go one of two ways. You can come down here where it says my content. That way it'll be on that splash page. It'll be on that first dashboard page. You'll notice there's one above it called University of Louisville because I had to go teach people how to use this who were college professors. Isn't that interesting? Don't go there. And now I'm going to, I've, I've got, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to just give it a title. Well, what else would you do? Okay, so I'm going to call this, um, what, what should we call this, Scott? Give me, give me something. These are the days of our lives. No, Scott, don't do that. <laughs> Let's just do fractions. Sure, fractions. Okay, okay, fractions. Now, when I do that, there's already one here made, but we're not going to use that. We're going to go over here and we're going to add content. Do you want us to title it fractions? No, no. Just give it, give it something that's fairly specific. Specific. No, it's a little more granular than what you've been playing with. Well, man, I'm picking on you, but that's because you've been doing stuff lately. What you all, you all were doing writing. So did you do anything that was like? Understanding the kinds of writing, or is it more like how to write? Yeah, it's the writing workshop. Okay, so let's let's 
So if I were to do one on writing process, what I've got to be kind of thinking here is we know we can find anything inside of YouTube. Agreed? Well, we've got to be very careful when we do our YouTube searches now because we need to be looking for stuff that's going to fit for what this can do. And I'll show you what I mean in just a second here. I'm going to go with fractions. And I'm going to search. I'm going to go over here to the Ube of the Tube, and that's where I'm going to search. Now, I picked YouTube. I could have picked Khan Academy. I could pick National Geographic, TED Talks. See, what I'm saying here is if you're teaching high school, and if you're teaching something that has to do with high school English where you're talking about propaganda, you're talking about argument, you're talking about all those high-level things, you can go to TED Talks and find people who talk about that. So kids have to not only hear it, but they have to interpret it and make it their own. Um, Veritasium. What is the Veritasium? Somebody click on that and tell me what this is. I can't remember what it is. I think it has to do with videos. truth. Huh? It says videos, and it's like why I can stand up at the end yeah. of scientific notation. Yeah, yeah. Okay. You know what number file is, of course. That one's easy. It's, it's all about different kinds of ways to get kids turned on the numbers to math. Now, I'm going to kind of look down through here, and I'm going to try to guess, because it's a guess at this point, which one of these might, well, might work well for me. I'm not going to pick the fraction song one because that's not what I'm trying to get at here. I'm trying to get kids to see how something works that I'm going to jump into. That's the power of the Ed Puzzle. Not only do you see the video, but they're going to see you, hear you within the video. So let's just go. I'm, I'll watch this one just to see what it is. I'm going to watch Earn Fractions in seven <coughs> minutes. Okay, the first thing I notice is he's kind of soft in his voice, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm going to edit that. Okay, now, let me slow down here because I'm going too fast. I've gone and found the video. I started listening to the video. I just want to hear and I want to see the content of the video. Now, I just want to grab this one because I'm really not interested in his content. I just want to show you the process. So now when you bring it in, what do you notice that's at the end and the beginning of the video? A couple of little markers. See them? This is your cropping capability. So if, if I watch the whole video and about I go back and look at it and go, no, he, he talks about nothing for the first 30 seconds. What could I do? Slide that over. Okay? That's the first thing I can do. So I'm going to say, you know, I really don't need to hear you, whatever you're doing, for the first 30 minutes, so I, or 30 seconds. So I'm going to slide this over and get it started where I want it to start. I want it to start. And especially if I'm working with kids who are hyper-distractible, you know what I'm saying here. Now, the other answer, the other problem with this might be that I have kids who would freak out at it suddenly starting that fast. Okay, fair enough. What if I come in here and do an audio note? Now folks, this is where Ed Puzzle sits up and says, look at me. With the audio note, I now have a way of pre-staging what's gonna happen. Last, remember how last week we talked about fraction formation? This video is going to help you with understanding fraction formation. I'll be back in and out of the video 
to give you a heads up on the stuff that's important in here. So now you have a way of being able to chunk it, because that's the hardest thing for kids to deal with. You throw all this out at one time. Now I have the ability to sit here and simple as, it's as simple as, I'm going to add a note, audio note. I'm going to click on the little picture of the microphone. The little flashy thing pops up and says, do you want me to allow this to happen? I'll say you allow. And now it's recording my voice. What do you notice about the normal timeline or the little indicator here in the YouTube? It ain't moving. You with me? So see, I can go ahead and stand here and talk and talk and talk, setting the, set, setting the stage. I could go 30 minutes, 30 seconds in because I don't want all the junk at the beginning, but I can still put that little audio note at the beginning and says, okay, here's what we're going to be doing. Here's what I want you to watch for. Record, 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 let it go. Just click on it again to stop it from recording. Now you've got it. Same trick. I can slide wherever I need to jump back into the video. Heads up, guys. This is what we talked about last week when we were looking at fractions. Pay really good attention to how he's showing you how to multiply fractions. Stop. You with me? Okay. Now, I've never seen this used very much. I've seen it used a couple of times. There's a lady uh, who teaches biology out at Southern. She's fabulous. Fabulous. She goes in and she finds all these really good biology, high school AP biology based videos. And she blows out the entire <laughs> audio track and she uses the voiceover. Her name is Brittany. And Brittany basically just records over the entire thing. But that's because she knows her content so solidly that she can look at what's in the, in the video and realize that's not what you ought to be emphasizing. You ought to be talking about it like this. And she goes and does that. She's one of the very few people I know who does that. All right, let's get to the meat of what we're trying to do. And there we go, quizzes. So when I click on the quizzes, I'm basically going to come in here and I'm going to say I want a quiz at this point in the video. Or I can slide it forward again and have it at this point in the video. I click on the little question mark thingy and I can ask my question. Notice you've got the open-ended question choice, you've got the multiple choice one, And you can do a comment there. How did this go for you? Did it help? Did you get it? Add your answers. Pretty straightforward stuff. Nothing fancy there. But boy, is it fancy right there. That's for you. I can crop my video. First one up there on the left. So in other words, in 30 seconds, 10 seconds, whatever. If the ending, if I want to stop it, because maybe all I want is 12 seconds worth of this. Because in total, in the entire five minutes and 58 seconds, it's overwhelming the kids. But I could go in there and I could say, this chunk, this 20 second chunk is really what I want kids to understand and show me they understand. So I have that ability to do that. I can then come back in and I can say, this is where, this is what we talked about last week when we were playing with our blocks. This is what it looks like two-dimensionally. And then finally, I can put in a, a quiz that says, so when you look at a raise, you're doing this and you're doing that. Got me? Yeah. Got I'm going to save it. And I'm going to 
I'll, I always save it again just because it makes me nervous. And now I'm going to finish it. Okay. And I'm going to assign it to a class. I can either leave it as open or I can leave it as classic. In other words, they have to log in. So this would get to Katie's problem that she had. So in other words, you can just see it and you can go do it. All right. They changed their page. So now I've got to look. How do I get it out of here and send it over to our good friend? Guys, I hate when you all change stuff. You can grab the link. I see the link, yeah. So there's the copy to the link. When you go to import a class, it won't let you import from Google Classroom. It won't? Mm -hmm. All right, so they haven't got it yet. Yeah. Can you go to public links whenever you work on it? Do what, buddy? Can you go to public links? Yeah, the public link will get it done, yeah. So you can just take the URL. You take the URL. But... The thing would be that, and I thought they had fixed this, so I apologize. I thought they had fixed it so they would understand that you had a Google Classroom, and then whatever kids did on these little quizzy thingies you do, it would dump it back over there. Obviously, it does not. Let me double check that. All right, you play. I'm going to look this up real fast. It says it's right there, which I thought it was too. Okay, let me go back and look. All right, there's your code and all that good stuff, and there's your link. Got it. I see it. But... Here's my question. What if I want to go back and do it? Okay, so here we are. We're here. Show more. Assign video. We've already gotten through that. There it is. It's right there. They're saying if I go down here, it's down here at the bottom. I don't see that. And that's what I thought it did. All right. Let's go back up here to my classes. And let's go to invite students. No, I don't want that. There it is. There it is. Okay. My bad. So it's the first thing you do. Not the last thing you do. So the first thing you do is from the dashboard, right? The landing pad, if you will. 
See where it says add new class, Google Classroom. So I create inside my Edpuzzle after I add the Google Classroom. And I go to the Edpuzzle settings, and then I can put in the information that would get me in there. Now, the problem with that's going to be, well, I don't know. I mean, could you have more than one connection? Let's see. There's my 585 class. There's my SWAN class. Okay, we know that that one doesn't work. Here's my settings. I don't see anything in here. Oh, I know what it is. I know what it is. If you log into this with a Gmail, your Google Classroom key, and then you go over here to add the new class, and you see that Google Classroom. Okay, so our only way to do it is exactly the way we know how to do it. Which is get the URL, go into assignments inside mm -hmm. of Google Classroom. Mm -hmm. The power of it would be if you had the Google classroom login that you use to create in here, then everything that they would take in here is going to feed back over into your gradebook. My bad. It's okay. We'll let it slide this time. Okay. Yeah. Just hang on the old hand and let it, let it roll. That's cool. So we put that in as material or assignment or... That's, that's a really good, good question. Now, to me, when you get into the Google Classroom, that's where I think the rubber does meet the road. And it's one of the things I don't think we do a good job in training. And what is the difference between material and question? Not much. Right. right. So it's almost like you have to train your kids to understand. When I give you new stuff, it's going to be in a thing called material. Now, Carrie, she'd be having a fit right now. Mm -hmm. Carrie would say, no, 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 no. You do everything through the assignments. My argument back to Carrie would be, well, then I got to have 14 different assignments for just stuff that I want kids to look at. Right. What could you, the assignment could be you watched it? Because if it's material and there's nothing assigned. Now, see, she she argues with me that she does. She picks like our FET simulations that we looked at. That definitely goes in the material box. Okay. And then the assignment and the assignment says go to the material folder, look at the FET simulation about uh, cellular or whatever, whatever. And she Let's review. Google Forms, down, dirty, easy. I see Google Forms more as a way, of, because of that liquor scale capability in it, as a way of gauging the temperature in the room, frankly. How we do it? Uh, we studied uh, this week, in other words, on Friday. Go into your Google Classroom, take a look at the uh, little quiz I have there asking you about how we're doing it. And assure kids that it's all private. Nobody sees it except me and your teacher. That's forms. Forms has sexy themselves up with the fact that you can now put pictures in them, you can put YouTube videos in them, but it's pretty much here's a video, watch it, answer questions. The star is Nearpod. The stuff you can do in Nearpod is just jaw dropping. And the fact that it's so easy to move that into your Google. It's just create, click, boom. Ed puzzle. Ed puzzle is how we do differentiation. Now I can take a good video, and that's the work. You gotta find it. Take that good video and then figure out how you can manipulate that video to work in your classroom. And the fact that I can make an ed puzzle for the row that's gonna my high flyers for my row of good kids and for my struggling kids, I have the ability to make three different, three different videos that do three different things in terms of teaching to them, but it's all the same content. Hello, Dr. Collison. We just did differentiation. Thank you very, very much. Your damn book doesn't tell us how to do that. 
I said that. Write it down. Any questions? Nope. So you felt like this was worth it? Yep. You got something out of this one? All right. Mm -hmm. The next two times I'm going to meet with you, I'm going to send you stuff ahead of time. Okay? Next time I see you, we're going to play in Scratch. Has anybody ever played with Scratch? The Scratch guy. Okay. I'm going to send you the information about how to go in and create your account in Scratch. You're not going to beat Stevie Swan this time. It's going to be you. Okay. I want you to have your own Scratch account. We'll be using Scratch at MIT, which is hosted on the web. For a while there, Scratch was a downloadable app you could use. I don't see why you need to do that anymore. Let's just use Scratch. Scratch teaches basic coding of what's called an OOPS, Object-Oriented Programming System. And what that means is the code, it's all block code. You just drag things over, and that block code allows you to manipulate what's on your screen. I can talk all kinds of math to Scratch. I can talk story development to Scratch. I can talk anything to Scratch. <coughs> So that's what we're going to do with that. Following week, I'm going to throw you in VR, VR with Ed Puzzle. I don't think Ed Puzzle, listen to me. Co-spaces. What I'll need you to do that night, and I'll send you <coughs> to you in, a, in an email, is before you come into class, I'm going to ask you to put the Co-spaces app on your phones. Okay? Uh, I'll bring in uh, head, headsets that we could probably share. I don't think I have nine, more like four or five, but we could share and then I have the cubes that I'll let you play with as well. Uh, AR is basically augmented reality. If you've been buying anything from home, Wayfair, Wayfair. Ikea has it. Yeah, and Ikea now has it. And now Google or Amazon says they're going to start having it. Where you hold your phone up and you see the thing sitting in your room. Well, you're learning how to do that. Um, and VR is where you're going to put yourself into a virtual world that you create. My shtick on this is the following. Why should I spend hundreds of thousands of dollars to put a Oculus Rift on a kid and have him go, oh, this is cool. When what I should be doing is saying, this is co spaces. This is how you build your own virtual reality. Done? All right. Thank you all, as always. Oliver? What else can he do? Does he know to sit and all that kind of stuff? Sit, shake, high five, up easy. My bottom, did you buy him already starting? Oliver. You got to have a treat. Oh. Okay. Here, I'll go get a treat. No, sorry. Right. No, no, don't worry about it. He'll freak out when you walk out. No, he won't. He can still see me. Since I wasn't here last week, mm -hmm. I'm not sure what I missed. All we did last week was, and they all went crazy over the bunch. Because it's not the four, right? Yeah. So, so what it does, what it was doing was, it was looking at content. So how do you find that kind of engaging content, and then you put it in? Okay. So they they were creating gun scenes. Go. Some folks went out and found pets, and took the link and put it into an assignment in their Google. So they have a lot of material, way. Because if you well know, they all have the little dots at the end that the code no. or the uh, link you put in the assignment. So what do I need to do for the assignment? Okay, so again, I gave you three choices. Okay. You can do a bunch here. You can do a, just go find a fetch and put it in there. Yep. And then there was like, what was Wait, and that's just all you can do from that before. Okay. And then send you the link to the blackboard and the assignment. Okay. All right. Now see everybody's class. Okay. But we still need to submit the blackboard. Yeah. Okay. But, but here was the, the four, see if you put that in there and I couldn't get to your classroom, right. it would be a dead blank. Right. So I can see some so I can see some I just want to make sure I'm all caught up in everything. Well, you all are. No, so you weren't here. Right. You weren't here for the speech, was it? No. Yeah, I graded everything. Okay, that's fine. Well, I still have to do it. I just realized I don't have the T-Tech. And that's okay. I do too. 
But so for digital natives, because today we're Module 5, right? Yeah. So I can send a link to my classroom for Module 5. How did it pass? So, no, that was. So did I. I did submitted it a link last semester. So we did. Yeah. Like a, so did like a, the digital natives. An assignment yeah. and then a. Okay, the digital natives, all you did is you used it. Make all these comments. Okay. And then you can either or some other software that comes into. And I'm talking about. Where are my digital natives? Are they real? Oh, okay. And there's a whole thing in that particular module about. Digital natives, right? Make a comic or something. You want to make like an editorial comic? Okay. One panel? Perfect. Fine. Okay. The default is free. Okay. Okay, but you don't have to do three. Okay. You can just do a one and a three. Okay, where it's and they should be up on their classroom so I can just check it out to make sure it's okay. Okay. Okay, cool. We submitted our module five last week. Should it be a tenth till this one? Or when will we do it? Oh, did you actually submit? Or last week. Yeah. You can put it on the floor. That's easy. Okay. No, it's okay. I can do it. That's, that's a no brainer. Okay. Well, you're going to clear the attempt to be able to see what you're going to get to see what Yeah. Yeah, it always, so in other words, when I clear it, all it does is it just sends it back to you that it's clean. It doesn't wipe it out. Okay. So, like, let's say you had already had one line that was represented to Earl from last week, your bus. Uh -huh. yeah. Okay. And you're not going to be able to go back in and hit return and upload that, but when the Earl then represents the little reception okay. that you Okay. Perfect. You with me? Does that make no. sense? No. Can we show you? So, what do I need to do now? Nothing. I'm He's going to basically clear the attempt, and it's still going to keep your attempt one because you'll see it, but you'll have another attempt where you can submit the link for your classroom for four okay. days. And that's my fault. On these doubles like this, I should say to you all, don't submit. Wait to get everything put in there. Okay. So you're going to let me have another attempt. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But it will not wipe out whatever you put in there from before. Okay. Yeah. But I still have to miss did. something for Module 4, right? Yeah. The okay. Module 4 was I the digital need to Okay. 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 Today. Right, and that's my fault. I should have said, hey, we're going to do two things this time. Yeah. See, that's what I did on Monday morning. Right. Yeah. 